I saw your video on Night Fight. Oh, thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Called him after five years. When in town, we arranged a session on Night Fire. Hell yeah, that's what video games are all about. We get our mates together with them. We play our silly little games. And we just have fun with it. A lot of people get caught up in the online discourse of drama over video games. And a lot of people can forget that they are there to be fun. They are there to have a good time. And if you step away from the drama caused by games... Sometimes you can just play the game and enjoy it. It's... Does anyone else find that? Because, I mean, some people are what we call terminally online. Which means that everything is problematic, everything is bad, everything needs to be analysed super deeply. It is totally possible to want, and this is okay, to just play a game for the fun of the game. You are not wrong if you want to do that. Now, you can, if you want, get much more involved in the, the depth of everything. You can get super focused and super into it and learn all the behind-the-scenes stuff. That's okay. But what I tend to find, I think this is important to remember, is that there are certain it's people who place, get I tell you. angry at you door, if you don't do the same thing. You ever found that? Some people get angry at you if you don't get as invested as they get in whatever they're currently interested in. And I've had people, I've had friends, you know, cut contact with me because they've said, you aren't hyper-invested in this drama that's happening right now, and I think it's the most important thing in the world. Okay? There is an excellent old British TV show called Yes Minister, and it's basically about the, the ongoings of uh, political machinations within Downing Street in the UK. It's a comedy. It's very, very cleverly written. And one of the characters in there is like an advisor to the current prime minister or an advisor to the current cabinet and one of the cabinet members ends up saying to them why are you supporting us because you supported the previous kind of administration and they were different so wh where does your loyalty lie and the other guy said yes uh, you know I, I supported them i support you i'll support who comes after you and i'll support who comes after you because i realized that i mean i'm paraphrasing exactly what he says but ultimately what he says is the most important drama of the time for whoever is you know, looking at this drama will be inconsequential to the person that comes along in five to ten years' time. And whatever the most important drama is to them will be inconsequential to somebody else. It's very important to be able to occasionally take a step back and look at the bigger picture of things going on. It's a... It's difficult to step away from the drama when you are deeply invested in it, and sometimes it's important to see the forest for the trees. Or the trees for the forest, however you want to say that. Because I've had people recently contact me and say, how do you feel about this? And if I'm not outraged, they're annoyed that I'm not outraged. Do you have any idea how tiring it is to live your life in a constant state of outrage? I'm not saying that you should never take a stand or be annoyed at something. Of course, you should be annoyed at something occasionally. And of course, you should stand up for what you believe in. But if you put 100% of your angry, righteous fury into everything that you believe in, oh my God, you are going to get so drained so quickly. Not in the good way. Just like emotionally, you're going to be really upset all the time. It just irritates me that there's this... There's, there's always a righteous crusade for something. And I think the hypocrisy of the whole thing is as soon as something that's more dramatic comes along people tend to drop whatever thing they're arguing for at the time and then move on to argue for the next thing because i think some people and again i know this is quite off topic and off tangent but that's just how these streams go have you guys ever found that some people don't necessarily care about the cause they're arguing for they care about the social credit that they get when they are seen arguing for whatever the current cause is I tend to see that a lot. I see people saying, um, yeah, it's, and I'll even say to them, do you believe in this or are you just enjoying the high that you're effectively getting by arguing for it? Is there water in this cup? There is tea in this cup and there is gamer sups in this cup. That's what there is. Yeah, I mean, that's a great way of putting it. I think. I'm not saying that any current argument or debate going on is not important to a lot of people. It is. But I am also saying there is a level of performance to it. There are many people who will performatively argue in favour or against of whatever the current hot topic is 
because it generates attention. It's why I don't play whatever the hot topic video game is right now or try to get involved in whatever the hot topic is right now. Because there was a thing back in 2012 in the UK. I don't know if it was big in America. Remember Coney 2012? That whole, you know, warlord using child slaves. Coney 2012 and everyone was involved in it. And it was massive. Stuff like that is still going on in the world today. All right. But if you tried to get people invested in stopping that right now, they would say to you, oh, that's that's 10 years ago. That's 12 years ago. Don't worry about it. We, we solved that 12 years ago. No, we didn't. It's still going on. What happened was public interest in solving it died down. So now if you say, hey, actually, that's still going on, people go, oh, that's not the hot new thing anymore. Because it was never actually about solving the problem. It was about joining a righteous mob and enjoying the general vibe that that brings of being with a huge amount of people who are all arguing in favor of improving the world for the better, which is a good thing. But then what you tend to find is public reaction and public outcry lasts about six months. Four months if it's not too interesting or if there's other drama going on, but six months in general. And then something else will happen. So put it this way. I had, and again, I'll always be extremely honest with you. Like, extremely honest. Remember when Dungeons & Dragons had that huge big problem where they tried to take away the D&D &D license and say that everything that you put online is now owned by Wizards of the Coast, owned by Hasbro, where they tried to take away the free D&D &D license and everyone jumped over to Pathfinder 2, okay? Then the D&D &D film came out and it was really good and everyone forgave them. So what happened was, when that whole Dungeons & Dragons thing happened about six months ago, maybe slightly longer than six months ago now, maybe about a year ago, I had people come to me and say, well, what are we going to do? Are we going to release a statement to say that we do or don't agree with Hasbro? Are we going to fight back? Are we going to get involved? Are we going to, you know, take a stand with everyone else? And I said, no, no, what we're going to do is wait six months and see what happens. And everyone just kind of moved on. And now everyone's back to playing Dungeons and Dragons and the movie did pretty well. And yeah, now are we going to get the Pinkertons smashing our knees down? No, no, we're just going to wait because public outcry lasts about six months. I am sorry to tell you this, but if you still feel really passionately about that, that's absolutely fine. We're not talking about people being right or wrong with the opinions they hold. We're talking about general public interest and perception lasting about six months. It is the depressing reality we live in. Right now, everyone's hating on Helldivers 2 because of Sony. Give it six months, there will be some other drama that kicks off in the video game sphere. There'll be some other drama that kicks off in the cultural sphere in general. Some people will keep playing Helldivers 2, some people won't. It will just move on. It is very difficult to, and this links back to the whole thing about being angry all the time, it is difficult to maintain that level of anger and focus over a long time. Which means once the energy of being angry and being focused on one thing starts to dip, something else happens, your anger and your focus switches to that, and then suddenly that flame is reignited and the cycle continues. Blizzard. Remember when everyone was massively against Blizzard for a long time? And then there, I mean, Asmongold said it a while ago. He said, you know, the people's anger, people's boycott only lasts until the next cinematic drops. Now, some people have stayed away from Blizzard for a long time, including myself, because I just don't find much fun and interest in the games. But their money, their income represents that most people just don't care. And that and again, I know this is a bit of a tangent, but I, it's, in, it's important to me to know your opinion as well. Because what I don't want to do, this is very important to me. I do not ever want to get trapped in an echo chamber of thinking something is right or wrong, agreeing with something. Or if I get really far into that, uh, you know, internet mindset of everyone cares about this. What's very important to remember is the average gamer is not reading gaming news. The average gamer, you know, the person that goes to work, to a nine to five job, comes home, turns on whatever video game console they've managed to scrounge up the money to buy, and then enjoys the game. 
when I say scrounge, I don't mean in a bad way. I mean that video game consoles are expensive and you're not going to own all of them. Some people come home and say, you know, I just want to turn on PlayStation, Xbox, PC, Wii, Switch, whatever they've got, enjoy a game for a bit, and then go to bed. Because that's their fun time. That's what they do. What they don't want to do is come home from work, turn on the game, and get told by a crowd of people why the game they're playing is problematic, why the money they've spent is wasted, why they shouldn't be enjoying that because there's stuff going on behind the scenes that you should be invested in, and that should affect your gaming experience. The average video game player does not care about anything outside of their experience with the game. That's what it is. And the invested, enfranchised, angry gamer gets upset when everyone else isn't as invested and enfranchised and as angry as they are. Sometimes I say to people, I want to play this game because I enjoy it. Some people have come over to me before and said, Josh, I know you'll hate this, but I really enjoy this gacha game. I'm like, I don't hate that at all. I hate that the game is being used as a vehicle to drive an aggressive anti-player monetization strategy, but I don't hate you for enjoying it. Your ability to gain enjoyment from that game is brilliant. It's beautiful. It's what more games need. But you need to still be critical, if you want to, if you've got the energy, of the systems that they are pushing onto you. Don't let that take away your enjoyment. And occasionally, just enjoy games, man. Just enjoy playing the games. You can be critical of a game while at the same time enjoying aspects the game has, but it's hard to do because if you do that, both sides hate you. The average chilled out gamer hates you because they don't want to hear any of the issues about the game. And the ins extremely enfranchised argumentative player hate you because how can you enjoy the game when this bad stuff around it is going on? It's very difficult to find that kind of middle ground where uh, you're trying to appease both people and you just can't. Careful. Asmongol got a ton of flack for saying this in a harsher way. That's very true. Oh, Van. That leads me to a second conversation. We'll get back to the game in a minute. Don't worry. We've got all day. We've got all day. Let me explain this to you. I had a friend recently message me. Um, I think it was relating to something Asmongold said or did or some kind of other streamer said or did. And let's, let me, exp again, this is, I've always, I'll always be honest with you. And some of the harsh truths that you need to hear are horrible, but important. Have you ever held an opinion and then you have met somebody else who holds a different opinion and you believe their opinion is wrong? The immediate human response is to want to attack, to want to mock, to want to tell them why they're wrong. But consider this. If your actual goal is to convince them to no longer hold that bad opinion and instead hold your opinion, then you need that person. It's going to sound horrible, but it's true. You need that person to like you. Because if they don't like you, even if your opinion may be objectively better, they will push against it just on the personal notion of them not liking you. And when you attack somebody else for the opinion they have, you make them dislike you. You do not beat someone into submission and have them agree with you. So, this is just, this is psychology. One of the best things to do is to not attack them and instead question. Ask why they hold that opinion. Continually ask why. Because people don't necessarily want to agree with facts. They want to agree with feelings. And if you want to convince someone that your point of view is correct, the most important thing above all else is for that person to like you. If that person likes you, they will agree with something even if they don't agree with it because they want you to like them. And they want to like you. And that's feelings. And it pushes that way. It's how cults work. So, and this is, again, a horrible truth. A lot of people dislike streamers, YouTubers, entertainers, influencers. 
Which means even if that streamer, entertainer, or influencer turns around and says something that they want to objectively agree with, they will disagree with it out of uh, out of principle of disliking you. This sounds like something a cult would say. It is. It is 100% cultish. Because I've had people say to me before, why do, and this is an interesting thing, why do so many you know young guys in uh, high schools and colleges look to the kind of manosphere, if you will, Tate being a perfect example? Well, it's because they look at people they want to be like, and they look at people who are rich, people who are wealthy, people who are, you know, charismatic, people who have the lifestyle they want, and then they say, right, I, I like them, I want to agree with them. Some people don't even have their own opinions, and they're almost like, hey, tell me what to think. Tell me what I need to know. And then those people espouse their bullshit, and people who haven't formed opinions yet instinctively agree with them. And that becomes their opinion as well. So the reason this loops all the way back round is when someone says to me earlier, careful, uh, I'm saying a similar thing to what someone else said, but in a different way. I'm fully aware there are similarities and there are crossovers. But I'm also completely aware that it's not my place to attack people for disagreeing with what I believe. If anything, I would like more people to start questioning what they do and don't believe. And one of the best ways to do that is to never ever attack people for what they believe, but instead question why they believe it, ask them to question why they believe it, and then offer an alternative. So they believe they came to that conclusion themselves. Because you do not, you know, beat someone into liking you or agreeing with your opinion. That grief, that, you know, I like to think that in the game, we've been saying all this to that guy, to Chairman Greeter. He's just, I've walked in, I've gone, Chairman Greeter, let me talk to you. Let me explain to you the psychology of getting people to understand and agree with you and change their opinion. And he's like, sir, I'm, I'm going to need to take your weapons from you. I'm really going to need, you need to give me your guns or not, but please, my God, make a choice. What are you on about? Who are these people that you're mentioning? Sir, this is a casino. Um, but no. That is a very important thing. So whenever you're in a discussion with someone, and this, again, it loops back to games, and I'll stop in a second, I really will, but if someone comes to me and says, that game is problematic, you shouldn't be playing it, that is bad, why are you doing this, you are awful, I am instinctively going to be on the defensive, and I'm not going to want to agree with that person, even if they might be right. If someone comes over to me and they're like, that's a fun game. I'm like, yeah, it is. They're like, oh, I've played some of that game. I'm like, oh, cool, you want to play it together? They're like, I'd love to, man, but, you know, recently this thing came out about the behind the scenes of the game, and it's actually pretty bad. And I'm like, oh, really, what happened? And they're like, well, actually this happened and that happened, and this is connected to that, and, you know, the game is still good, man, but it's really tainted my ability to enjoy it. I'd be like, oh, and you know what? I, I never thought about it that way. I never got it. Now it's annoyed. Now it's tainted my ability to enjoy it. Now I kind of agree with you. Both those situations wanted the same result, me to agree with the other person. But one of them came out swinging and the other one came out clever. And the reason that people still attack others for holding wrong opinions and holding other dis you know, different opinions is because, this is the truth, it feels good to want to aggressively attack someone for wrong think. That's a human nature thing. There's that lovely vindication of just coming out swinging, of just attacking, that moral superiority. You don't get to feel that if you're actually trying to convince someone of your own opinion. It just feels good if you run at someone and attack. But that doesn't actually get the result you want. So sometimes you've got to ask yourself a question. What's more important to you? The feeling of being involved in the us against them, righteous moral superiority war? Or actually changing people's opinions? Very, very different. Very difficult. Because being involved, tribalism feels good, but it is not effective at getting people to join your tribe. 